You know, I'm looking at Photon Hypernova here on my big old monitor screen, and uh, it's not looking good, Chief. Uh, yeah, Photon Hypernova is looking like a big old brown stain. Let's dive on into it, shall we? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo stain out of that subscribe button so we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I'm truly appreciative for each and every one of you, and if you are out and about on New Year's Eve while you're watching this video, be sure that you are being safe. Don't drink too much of that Yu-Gi-Oh! Devil Juice, you know what I'm saying? Don't let the uh, self-destruct button hit your butt as you're going on home and then you gotta vomit in the toilet, you know what I mean? <laughs> Don't, don't drink a drive, folks. So, uh, I was looking at Photon Boo Boo Stain, and, uh, you know, anytime a set's crap, I try to think of, like, something that's, like, witty to say about the set, like Darkwing Blast and Darkwing Boo Boo Stain. Um, uh, Photon Hypernova, I haven't really thought of anything for it yet, because this set's, this set's not bad, right? The set is good if you want to play Cash Tira. If you don't want to play Cash Tira, and assuming how hard or how little tier element gets hit on the ban list come February, since they're getting Photon Hypernova come February, so that's probably when they'll drop a ban list, if not late January, but I digress. Uh, there is nothing here in this set that you want to actually get if you do not plan on playing tier element or Cash Tira to some degree. Now you're probably saying, well, Avery, what if I want to play Galaxies? You know, we're getting all this new Galaxy support. I'm going to be completely honest with you. Whether you're casual or a competitive player, stay the fuck away from this shit. <laughs> like, the Galaxy stuff is hot garbage. Like, unless Galaxy is consistent to the point where they can put out a couple Omni Negates and play around Nibiru before they hit Summon Number 5 or on Summon number, number 5, they put out a Negate, then that's cool. I'll admit, I don't really keep up with Galaxies, but unless I see something that's just like, oh shit, this is broke... Um, I do not give a rat's turd. I literally do not. Because Galaxies have yet to prove over the years that they are actually a competitively viable deck. If you're casual, do whatever the fuck you want. Like, I had a bunch of people with my Don't Buy the Dark World Structure Deck video saying, I'm casual, I'm a collector, and this and that. You do you, boo-boo. I don't know how many times I gotta say that. If you're casual or a collector, you do you, sugar boo bear. Like, you go and buy this baby bag bullshit. But if you're competitive like your boy, if you want to use your money as effectively as possible, because for whatever reason, people like to complain about the price of Yu-Gi-Oh, which sometimes it can be expensive. But then those same people are like, well, this is expensive. Like, I can't afford this. Go and buy singles, number one. Number two, if there's a deck that you do know you want to play, you buy the shit in advance. That's why I bought all my Cash Tira shit in advance, minus one Cash Tira unicorn that didn't show up in the mail that I paid $12 for off of TCG Player, and now they're like $18 to $19. Feels bad, man. <laughs> so besides that, the Galaxy stuff is just a hot pile of garbage. Um, we're getting Bi-Steel Ball Drake, which is just basically another Druid Worm with a bit of a different effect. That's cool. We're also getting Ivashiki Namina, Namana, Namina, Jemima, uh, however the heck you say it. I can't even find it here on, on this crap. Um, here we go. Ivashiki Naramanis. Yeah, try saying that 10 times fast. Um, <laughs> it's a cool Gishki ritual. It's got a pretty interesting effect as a soft once per turn to be able to negate a monster effect just by bouncing a Gishki ritual. Um, Zeal Gigas is a card, which is like, what, 3,300 attack and defense on like a level 10 or 11 or 12 ritual monster. That's disgusting. Um, I don't really know if Gishki's going to be able to keep up because, you know, obviously it's like trying to catch a falling sword. We don't know how hard tier is going to get hit you know, until we see the ban list and it's in our hot little hands or hot little eyes if you're, you know, looking at it on a computer screen. But outside of the Cash Tira stuff, and I'm not even going to mention uh, Galaxy stuff because it's just not good, there's really not a whole lot in this set that's worth getting. You do have Triple Tactic Tasking. That is a really cool card in concept. I don't know if we're really going to see it be played a lot. I feel like people might do like a combination of like two to three talents with like one to two, maybe three tasking. I don't think decks are going to be playing triple tactics talent, like three copies of that. And then also three copies of tasking. That just seems really overkill because keep in mind the card that you get with tasking, you can't play that turn, whether you're adding it to your hand or setting it to the field, whatever, because it's got like two different effects, like based on if like, 
there's a monster on the board or something. And then we're also getting hiding C. We're going to go hide and go seek up at his bitch. So what this does is that when your opponent special summons a monster or monsters, except during the damage step, you could special summon this card from your hand in face down defense position. And if you do change it to face up defense position during your end phase of this turn, you can only use this effect of hiding C once per turn. If this card is flipped face up during the end phase, destroy all special summon monsters on the field. So it's a fossil dyna for the end phase, but it doesn't just pop the opponents, it pops every, all both players, right? And it is a level 7 earth with 1300 attack, 2500 defense, so it does have a fat ass. The only problem is, is that even in Cash Tira, where you want all the level 7s in the world, it's not that good because if it's even alive by the end phase and it flips up, it's just going to pop your stuff and then you're going to have to detach material from your Shangri-La to save it. And or your Astral Karibo is going to have to be attached to your Diabolsis or whatever number monster you have to save it. Then at that point, you're losing your uh, Cash Tira Rise Heart, which is your macro, and like that just sucks. So I don't really feel like Hiding C is going to be all that good. I think it'll be really good for stun. Oh my god, let me tell you something. Hiding C in stun is insane. Like it's basically if you play three Fossil Dyna and three Hiding C, you're just playing six Fossil Dyna. You can't tell me that that's not good. Especially like if your opponent is trying to like set up a board, like the Hiding C is going to be face down and it flips up at the end phase. If they don't have a negate for that Hiding C, they're just going to lose the board that they try to establish. Very interesting card. It's going to be interesting to see if it actually does see any play. Anything that has quotation mark C quotation is going to, you know, put everybody's panties in a jammy. <laughs> and then, you know, we also have like the Grand Gagongnol, the finale dragon thing. That's cool. But I mean, I don't really feel like Branded can do anything. Like, I'm looking at this set and I'm just like, okay, you're giving Albaz in general more support, which is cool. I don't keep up with the lore, but I think Albaz has cool art and stuff. Um, I think the whole concept, like, of the lore kind of is cool. Like I said, I don't really keep up with it, but it seems cool. Um, but, you know, unless they're supporting Branded directly and making that deck more explosive or more consistent or just giving it more negates or something, then it's not really worth investing in when you're not really going to get a payoff for it. I'm not saying that Finale Dragon's not good, has the potential to be good. I just don't know if it's really going to see a lot of play. Um, so now we're at the point of like what? We're counting on one hand how many cards are good. You have the Plunder Patrol ship, new monster. That's the Synchro Pendulum thing. That seems good for Plunder Patrol, but you have to ask yourself how good is Plunder Patrol right now? And even moving into a Cash Tira format, I don't know how good it's going to be. So at this point, we're looking at the Cash Tira support in general. Triple Tactic Tasking. Um, <clears throat> you have the Gishki Ritual. Uh, what else is there? Maybe Hiding C. And that's really it. I don't really see anything else. Chozo of the Trillion Hands, because everybody wants that card. But, like, outside of that, like, there's not really anything else here that really sticks out that is just like, oh, my God, this card's insane. Um, yeah, like, we get new Labyrinth support. Like, okay, maybe it becomes a Tier 1 deck. Maybe. But, I mean... People said the same thing about Therion Adventure ABC Dragon Buster. And, like, that deck didn't do a thing. It won, I think, like, one championship. And then it crapped the bed. And it didn't do a damn thing for the rest of this format. Or even the format before that. So, I hope that we do see, like, a lot of diversity come from this set. I just don't think that it's going to be on the level of, like, it just warps the format as a whole. And, like, that kind of seems like a loaded thing, too, right? Like, how can sets keep up with something like Power of the Elements? Or if you really want to go far back, Duelist Alliance or Duelist Revolution, um, Rise of the Duelist, you know, things like that. <clears throat> um, you know, it's hard to compare other sets when you see that set as, like, the upper echelon of, like, oh, my God, so good. Now, what I do hope for this set is that we do get some TCG exclusives because Konami knocked it out of the park with Garua. I would hope to see like some sort of rank 7 exceed or some sort of link monster that Kashtira can play that gives them a monster negate. Because right now the deck auto loses to Nibiru in sphere mode by extension. Um, and that makes it really difficult to play the deck when you're trying to establish a board and try and get set up and they just Nibiru you out of existence. I'm not saying that, you know, the deck should just instantly have a negate for it and be able to, you know just be able to be tier zero because of it <clears throat> you know obviously they can play things like cross out but cross out is really just garbage and you know 
I think the most balanced way would be give them like a rank seven exceed. That's like a monster in the gate. Because then that way, unless they have enough gas in their five card opening hand, they're going to have to commit to that exceeds monster before they can start committing to their other cash tier up plays. And some people have said, well, just play the Arsenal Falcon to get out the barrier statue. But then as the cash tier player, you can't make all the plays that you want. So it's not even worth it. So guys, let me know what you think about this set down below. I know that we're still a couple months away, but just at face value right now, kind of looking through these cards, I'm not seeing anything. Unless Yugipedia doesn't have a full set list here. This looks to be a full list to me of all the cards I'm looking at. I'm not seeing it, man. I'm really not. I hope that I'm wrong. I really do because Darkwing Blast was pretty decent and I think Photon Hypernova is going to be on the same level as Darkwing Boo Boo Stain, even though it's a Boo Boo Stain. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.